In this quick start guide to FRAC Studio, we'll begin by finding our way around the user interface. When I log in, I land on the My Tasks page, where I can see the tasks that have been assigned to my user, organised into columns according to their status. Here I can see three tasks assigned to me in the In Progress status column. Clicking on the task name opens the sidebar where I can inspect the task details. In the Info tab, I can see that I'm the assignee on this task. The My Task page is one of the global pages in the top menu bar, highlighted in pink to show that it's active. Other global pages include the Reports page, where we can run reports pulling data from multiple projects, and the Overview page, which can display a timeline view of multiple projects. On a new FTRAC workspace, there are two example projects included, NAPO and SYNC. To open a project, go to the Projects menu in the Global menu bar and select the project to load. When a project has been loaded, the lower menu bar appears, showing the project menus, including the Tasks page, where we organise our project, the Versions page, where we manage assets associated with our projects, such as media files. The Team Planner, where we can view task assignments and schedules for all team members on the project. And the Dashboards page, which displays a range of project data in graphical format. I'll return to the Task page, where we can see our objects representing things we're making, like shots or asset builds, and their dependent tasks. The hierarchical view mode displays our project structure like a file browser hierarchy. In this example, we have a folder object containing two asset build objects, each of which contain a number of dependent tasks. The shots view mode displays only the shot and asset build objects, ignoring any parent objects above them, and we can expand them to see their dependent tasks. The tasks view mode ignores all hierarchy and shows a flattened view of all tasks in the project. This view can be sorted, filtered and grouped as required. Now we'll take a look at adding users to the FTRAC workspace. In the System Settings menu in the top right corner, we can find the various system configuration menus in the left scroll bar, including Users and Groups, where we can create a new user account. There are two options here. I can send an email to the user so that they can set the account up themselves, or I can set it up for them manually. Now we can see the newly created user's details in the user list, including his role, which sets his permissions on the FTRAC workspace. If we edit the user, we can change the user role as required. In the Roles menu, we can inspect and edit the role assigned to the user to determine what menus and data he can access. When I log out and the newly created user logs in, we can see that he has access to a subset of the menus in FTRAC determined by his role permissions. Now we'll take a look at setting up a new FTRAC project. Under the Global Projects menu, I'll select Create New Project and enter a name for the project. Now I'll need to choose a workflow. This will determine how the project is structured. We can create our own custom workflows to fit a specific industry or studio pipeline, but in this case, I'll choose the animation workflow, which is one of the three default options available in a new FTRAC workspace. I'll set the start and end dates for my project and create it. When I hit Go to Project, I land on the Task page in the Project menu bar. Now I can create objects and tasks. I'll create an Asset Build object, set the type and name it. Now I'll add Modeling and Animation tasks to my Asset Build object. The default view shows the following attributes. Name, type, status, assignee, description, due date, and bid time. Views can be customized in a number of ways, including adding other attribute columns by enabling them in task settings. 
I'll enable the start date column and move it to the left of the due date column. The purple highlight on the currently selected default view indicates that it's been edited. In order to keep these changes, I'll save my view under a new name so that I can recall it and share it with other users. I can set task dates by entering them into a calendar, or if I enable the schedule overlay, which appears on the right, I can paint the tasks into the schedule gesturally. Next, I'll set the bid time on my tasks. Finally, I'll assign the newly created user to work on the task. Now we'll take a look at the project from the perspective of the newly created user, Joe. When Joe logs into the FTRAC workspace, he lands on the My Tasks page and sees the task that I've assigned to him in the column corresponding with the Not Started status. He moves the task into the In Progress column, updating its status. In my view of the project, I can see that the task status has been updated, so I know Joe's working on it. Joe has now completed the first pass on the modelling task and rendered a movie for review. He opens the sidebar for the task and switches to the Versions tab, where he can upload assets linked to the task. He selects the rendered movie and uploads it. He then moves the task to the Pending Review Status column. In my view, I can see the task is in Pending Review Status, so I know I need to take a look. I'll open the sidebar, select the Uploaded Movie from the Versions tab and open it in the F-Track Review Player. In the Review Info tab, I can change the status of the rendered version and the associated task to indicate my approval. In Joe's My Tasks page, he can see that the assigned task has been moved to the Done column, so he knows his work has been approved.